Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, did one man have something follow him home after a ghost hunt, or was it already there? Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That it is. 855-853-4802 is our phone number to share your real ghost stories with us. We'd absolutely love to hear them. You can also write it at realghoststoriesonline.com. It's kind of a chicken before the egg thing on this one where was the ghost already there? Did it come along from some sort of investigation? Uh, Mm -hmm. it's a, you know, it's something you got to kind of wonder about. Sometimes it feels like, well, people are, some people I think are just haunted or they're able to pick up on things better than others. So there's always things going on around them, no matter what they do. But right. I'm interested to hear what, uh, what happens in this story. Let's go to the phone call and, uh, find out. Hi, let's hear your ghost story. Hey, this is, uh, Isaiah from, uh, Central Valley, California. And, um, I wanted to tell you guys a story about, or a story that, a ghost encounter that I had. Uh, well, back in around, back around, uh, 2009, um, I lived in a, a small town in a newer house that my mom had purchased. And, um, I always caught like a weird vibe at this place. So I, I, I kind of want to, Set the tone and just tell you guys about how this house kind of always had like a negative vibe to it. So at the house, uh, I would always feel like something was watching me whenever I'd walk in my room and just weird little stuff like that. Eventually, at some point, I, I got a a little dog, and this dog always hated going to my room or sleeping in there. And as he got older, he had a little bit. Uh, he had more. He would do some some weird stuff like look at the ceiling and bark or he'd go into the room next to mine and he'd go into the closet and bark at the closet and this is before I like actually had a saw saw like an actual ghost or experience with sleep paralysis I'm not I'm not sure if it was just my mind playing tricks on me or or uh you know, actual experience. Uh, I've always been kind of a skeptic. And um, so when, uh, <clears throat> during this time frame, I remember, I remember like paranormal activity came out. And me and my friends were, we were starting to get really interested in, uh, in the paranormal. So we had looked up some, some places around the area where we thought that there might be uh well, there were stories or whatever. And and uh, one of the places we heard about was some house in the country. And uh, the house, I guess, there was a, a lady there who, I don't know, supposedly she was, a, she was a witch and she had killed some children. And then people uh, in the area found out about it and they went and burnt her house down. Uh, I don't know if the story's true or not. I tried looking it up. Couldn't find anything about it. But uh, we ended up going there one night, you know, trying to record some EVPs. And uh, I don't think we we got anything. The, the only weird thing that happened is uh, as we were leaving, my uh, my girlfriend said that uh, she felt like something, like, breathed on her neck. And uh, we left, and that was pretty much the end of that. And... um so like a couple nights later I'm at home and uh I I had already since I already felt weird about the house that we lived in I left the I would always leave the TV on at night I put the sleeper on there to to make it uh go off at a certain time way after I went to sleep so I set the I set it on sleep mode and I went to bed and um at some point I uh I woke up and, you know, I was in the state of sleep paralysis, pretty much stuck. And I'm looking at my TV and it's, a, uh, it's like, uh, I don't know what you would call it, but you know, like when there's white noise and it's just all 
the TV is just all like, there's not a picture on it. It's just a bunch of that white stuff going on. So that was all just, which is weird because I, we had like in my room, I wasn't using like, you know, like an antenna or something to get the only local channel. So I don't understand why it started doing that. Well, it started doing that and I'm stuck and I'm already tripping out because I can't move. And something, something weird just happens. I start hearing what sounds like, uh, it sounds like muffled screaming. I guess is the best way I can explain it. So I'm hearing this muffled screaming and, uh, I'm tripping out now because I'm, I don't know what that is. And I have a mirror across from me on my dresser. So after looking at the TV and hearing this sound, I look at the, I look at the, the mirror. And what I see is, I don't, I don't know if you want to call it like an old hag or what. Like the the best way I can describe it is uh, if you've ever seen The Grudge, and uh, when she, it looked like a, a lady just crawling down the wall, and uh, dirty white dress, black hair, and uh, I got scared, and I was in sleep paralysis, and. I'm just sitting there trying to scream for my mom, but it's not coming out. So it's pretty much like I'm humming. And I keep doing that, and eventually it goes away, or it stops. And I snap out of it, and my TV's still on the white, or my TV turned off, actually, since I had it on sleep mode. And um, so I stayed up the rest of the night and I was just kind of I was kind of freaked out you know so I ended up going to sleep and I get up the next day and I'm just doing my you know going to take a shower or whatever and I look at my back and I have uh, scratch marks on my back like three three scratch marks and um that was the last time I ever saw something like that or had a sleep paralysis experience like that. Although at that house, I did see, I did wake up one night to see a shadow person or whatever walking through my room and then out the wall. But uh, that was the last time I had that. And what, what always tripped me out about that, that whole incident is because that I was already having the bad vibes at that house. Like I said, is the dog would trip randomly on trip out on things and he wouldn't want to go into my room. And, um, I wasn't sure if this was something that happened because there was something at the house that was, uh, maybe some bad spirits or demonic entity entities or something, or if it was something that followed me home from the haunted or the house that was allegedly haunted. And uh, I'm really not sure to this day. I would always get a bad vibe in the house and everything. Uh, I mean, we ended up we ended up leaving, obviously, when I, I graduated high school. I ended up leaving and my mom sold the house. But the house always had a bad, bad vibe. So I, wonder, I don't know, maybe you guys could elaborate on it. I don't know if you guys have a... Uh, heard any stories like that before I mean I, I've listened to stories where they say that some things hold on to you when you go to haunted houses and I've listened to stories where it's just stuff at the house uh, maybe you guys can elaborate on it a little bit more and give me your uh, if you want it uh, if you guys ended up end up posting this uh, or ended up end up playing this on your podcast Thank you. And I'm going to keep enjoying the podcast because you guys have really cool stories on that. Thanks for sharing that experience. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like very easily something could have been there. Sounds like maybe there was something already in the house he was hanging out in day to day, you know, kind of lurking or whatever. And maybe, you know, whether or not something followed him home, but We've, you and I have discussed the fact that sometimes I think we have the energy to kind of create stuff ourselves. 
So if you make yourself believe that maybe something followed you home, does that change the energy around you? Does that create things happening around you? Who knows? Yeah, I mean, just the the thought of it, the the collective energy towards something, um, right? Does that create something? Can that affect something? Can it bring something up or out or more? A really interesting one. I thought um, uh, that I've been following it's on the other podcasts on uh, hitting killers. I've been following the Lori Vallow Daybell case, and I saw a really interesting article yesterday about a realtor who went into the property uh, where she was staying. It was an apartment building. And didn't know whose apartment it was. It was more so, okay, we're going to list this one. Um, and we just got to kind of do a walkthrough like a realtor would. Um, so they go in there and they see it. And he came back saying, I've never felt something, just the negative energy. You could cut it with a knife. There was something so dark in there when he was walking around. But he didn't realize it was Lori Vallow's until... Uh, they got to the garage, and in the garage, there was a cardboard box cutout that uh, JJ had used as a playhouse, uh, you know, with kids writing on the side of cardboard boxes, all that sort of stuff, and it was still there. And then he connected the dots and realized, oh, my God, this is where Lori Vallow was staying. But there was... Isn't, isn't that weird, like, yeah. that somebody who had no inkling what happened in a, in a house, in a building or whatever, yeah. can walk in and still get that feeling? It was. I mean, it, and it's... I don't get very spooky or anything over there, but I've had several people on the air that are psychologists or this or that. I had one last week that said, if there was ever an example of true demon possession, uh, Lori Vallow would likely be it because I mean, just the depravity and the evil nature as to what she did to her kids. Allegedly. I mean, it's, it's right up there with just completely, you know, crazy evil, but I don't I don't know if there's any element to that there where there is something or if it's mainly just, you know, this was a human being with a lot of mental disorders and this is how they act. And right. We're able to carry out horrible, horrible crimes. But no, it, it, it's interesting to think about that and how uh, energies will affect environments uh, as to where those individuals uh, spent a good deal of time. Thank you for that story. If you want to share yours, 855-853-4802 is our number. Of course, you can write in at Real Ghost Stories Online. Until next time, for Todd, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online.